You know, I've been a uh, financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for four decades. And uh, oft times I have CPAs and tax attorneys who will come and learn advanced continuing education. I have CPE, that's a continuing professional education courses. Uh, and we've taught some of the world's uh, largest law firms and CPA firms many sections of the Internal Revenue Code that they're not aware of, that they don't need to know in order to pass maybe the bar exam. Well, oft times I'll start a CPE class with this riddle, and it will stump many of the CPAs. You ready? Three fishermen went out for a great day of fishing, and at the end of the day, they wanted to check into this little mountain lodge. And as they were talking to the clerk, she said, oh, we've got a room down at the end with three beds. Uh, it, it's 30 bucks. Well, that's easy. Three men, $30. Each of the men shell out $10. Now, they're getting settled in the room when the clerk is entering it in the books, and she goes, ah, oh, I forgot we're remodeling down there. The insulation's out of the wall. They can hear the laundromat, whatever. And so we've been discounting that room. It's only $25. So she took five $1 bills out of the cash register and gave them to the bellboy and told the bellboy, would you take these $5 and go refund them to those three men? Well, the bellboy cannot figure out how uh, three men are going to divide up five $1 bills, and he's not very honest. So he pockets two of the dollars, and he goes back and refunds a dollar to each of the three men. So far, so good. So th we have three men who originally paid $10. Now they each got a dollar back, and so they paid really a net of $9. Three men times nine dollars equals twenty-seven dollars plus the two the bellboy kept equals twenty-nine dollars. Where's the other dollar? Now I asked that of CPAs and they'll go, taxes. Oh, it went in taxes. That, no, they always want to blame it on taxes, right? Now, what am I doing wrong? Where's the other dollar? Sometimes I will not give them the answer for an hour and it drives some of them bonkers, okay? Now, what do you learn in accounting? What are you accounting for? Okay, now if you're accounting for the $30 and you were to do it that way, which is not really the ideal way, but that's what I alluded to. Uh, if you take three men times $9, that equals 27 but you don't add the two the bellboy kept, you add the three they got back. That equals $30. If you were to say three times nine equals 27, and you're accounting for the price of the room, you subtract the $2 the bellboy kept. So see, I was adding $2, when I should have been adding three, or I was adding $2 when I should have been subtracting $2. Now, a lot of times CPAs add up what uh, investments, okay, will grow to. That you should choose investments based upon which ones grow to the most. No, you should choose investments based upon which ones generate the most at the time in life. You're going to need the money the most after subtracting the effective taxes and inflation. So don't be adding things up without subtracting things like taxes and inflation or you'll be stuck and stumped like these CPAs with the fisherman riddle.